the thrill of the hunt and the unexpected find of shopping at a thrift store, especially on those days where you just pop in there for a quick look and walk away with what you perceive and have found as some great treasures. Stay tuned, I'm about to break down some recent thrift store finds and some plans for upcycling some of the clothing items that I picked up. Welcome back to Dining Creativity. I'm Rachel Ann and I'm here to share my sewing journey, the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Like I said, this video, I'm just gonna share with you a couple very special pieces in my opinion, that I found on a recent trip to the thrift store. This was one of those experiences where I walked in, I had never been to this particular thrift store and immediately felt the energy of the store. And I realized, oh, this is special. It was like an off the grid kind of thrift store, not a, not a chain thrift store. The other piece that really contributed to the special energy I picked up on is that the second I walked into the store, Number one, they were playing the best oldie selection. So already I was feeling that, feeling the vibe. And then the clerk came up to me and said, you know, welcomed me in and said, would you like to hear the specials for today? I said, um, yes, please. And he proceeded to tell me that anything over a dollar was 60% off. And as soon as I heard that, I said, thank you. And I was off. I think I spent over an hour, maybe an hour and a half in that store. <laughs> it makes me laugh. I mean, I'm going to show you some jewelry I picked up, but I was digging through all these bins. It just was so much fun just to lose myself in that setting and kind of just go to town. So Without further ado, let me get into this. The first piece I'm gonna share with you and bear with me uh, with the hanger. It's <laughs> not the hanger that's meant for a top like this. This is originally from H&M. I need to remove, it's kind of blurry, but I need to remove their little red tag that they put on there. That's how they price it. But this is essentially brand new. I mean, I don't think this has ever been worn and I understand why it was given away. And that's because, and I'll try on and show you the, the little video of me wearing it. The neck is very high. It's almost uncomfortable. It's a beautiful fabric. It's fully lined. And so that those pieces I love. And again, it's literally in like new condition. I could just see this being one of those pieces where you're out shopping and you love the fabric, it's an okay top, and you just get it because it's inexpensive or you know, or something of that nature. But yeah, I put this on, I tried it on, and the neck is definitely too high. It's also way too long. And immediately when I found this, I know that you have probably seen all of those really cute tie vests that they have the little bows going down. And so I, I immediately realized, you know what? I'm gonna hack the bottom of this. I'll split it down the front, work on the neckline a little bit to make it more of the vest pattern. And I'm gonna create one of those little tie vests. I think that the fabric itself is just gorgeous. And I think it's gonna be a beautiful, kind of not so casual vest, but more of a dressy tie front top slash vest. And if I have enough fabric from the bottom, because really I only need 14 inches, I'll try it on to measure it of course, but my kind of line, maybe a little lower, maybe, maybe 15 or 16 to kind of hit me right where I want it to be and potentially even crop it so that I can create that little tight front top. So I'll keep you posted on how it turns out, but I'm very excited about this. I thought it was great condition. And just as a side note, the fabric type, it's 97% polyester and 3% elastane lining. But then it also says 100% polyester. So I'm pretty sure the whole thing is polyester and even the lining. I'll keep it lined, honestly, uh, for the vest because it is sheer and I think it gives it a little bit more weight. Those are the plans when it comes to this. And side note, this is an old school piece that I sewed up a very long time ago. I'll get the pattern for you and share that. 
but I'm really trying to pay homage to my pieces that I sewed when I first started out sewing. And I have a funny story. I may make a video where I share maybe kind of an overhaul of my sewing pieces because it just makes me laugh sometimes <laughs> when I find these pieces I sewed up several years ago and how I just kind of tried to make things work. But this was a cute dress. I wore this out to lunch with my husband um, probably a year ago and just wanted to wear it again for this video today. Now, the next piece I'm gonna show you, this one felt very special to me. I immediately saw it and loved the color it is a gorgeous, I know somebody hand sewed this because it doesn't have any tags. I know that they probably did all of that embroidery. I don't know, maybe by machine, maybe by hand, I'm not sure. But just check out this fabric. This is, a, without doubt, this is 100% silk. You, you know, I can just tell. And I love love the color. I mean, I honestly treat this fabric with reverence because it is just so stunning. I mean, I instantly just gravitated towards it. Now, the only thing it picks very easily. And so this is the pattern I'm thinking, I am thinking about using is making this tank top here let me get the camera to focus here on this. Okay, this is the tank top that I'm considering making with this particular fabric. I'm still trying to really figure that out, but this is Vogue 7254. This was a pattern I had found at a thrift store uh, a while back that I've yet to work with. But what I'm thinking is that this just really needs to be the focal point of whatever top I make. I am also considering using this pattern and oh, I'm gonna put it up on the screen here. I recently sewed that up and I loved the tie front detail and I think that could be super cute, but I'm just gonna have to play it by ear. So I'm gonna sit on this. The other piece, these other little special pieces, the buttons, those are to me just unbelievable and such a little unique piece. I think I can do something with those. I, I mean, even if I put them on a cute low profile headband, I don't know. There's just something though that I want to do with those as well. So I'm probably gonna sit on this for a little bit to really figure out what exactly I wanna do, but it, I just thought it was so gorgeous. Just the most beautiful fabric, the colors, and so we'll see what happens. I've already started working on this project. This is a dress that still had the tags on it. This is from Forever 21, and it really is just the cutest little tie front dress like I said, brand new with the tags and it ties right here at the bust. You can cinch it in on the sides and right here on, on the lower half as well. I looked like a Victorian ghost when I originally <laughs> put this thing on. It had a whole full other layer that, you know, I'm a shorty over here that trailed on the ground. And like I said, I just looked like a little floating um, Victorian ghost over here. And so I knew I needed to remove this long layer, this, this, yeah, a long layer from it. A mixture of a, I, I kind of felt like a mixture of a, a circus tent and a Victorian ghost, if I'm being honest. And so this is basically, this is gonna be a very quick little upcycle. So nothing major as of right now, but I basically just wanna take the layer off and then hem the bottom. And this is gonna be a bathing suit cover up. I thought it was so cute as a little bathing suit cover up because truly it's too low. I wouldn't just wear this out. It's just too low for me for every day. The other thing I was thinking about is potentially putting a little block right here, a little fabric triangle, so that it wouldn't be so low cut. So I'm still kind of contemplating, but either way, this is where it's at right now. And I'm I'm excited that it, you know, potentially could be just such an easy, quick little fix. 
to turn this into a bathing suit cover up. Kind of sad that it's almost the end of season though, but maybe I can get at least one layer out of it before the fall really comes into play. I'm going to use this as a practice piece to sew up another more casual little tie vest. I went down the YouTube rabbit hole and watched a million, you know, do it yourself videos on how to draft your own tie vest pattern. And it seems very straightforward. So I'm gonna practice with this piece and then maybe even try my hand at a little embroidery. We shall see, I'll keep you posted and of course share with you if I do that. If you have watched some of my previous videos, you may have always or maybe noticed this necklace. And <laughs> I pronounce it cloisonne, but that's, you know, from where I'm from, cloisonne. But it really, I believe it's pronounced cloisonne. It's a French, I, I believe originated in France, uh, vintage jewelry enameling practice. I don't know if that makes sense. Basically, it's where the enamel is laid into a, a necklace to make kind of a charm. And I have been collecting croissante for probably over 10, maybe 15 years. I first came across it at a thrift store in Chicago when I was visiting a good girlfriend of mine many, many years ago, instantly drawn to it. Talk about energy, cloisonne jewelry to me. And if I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that now too, but cloisonne jewelry truly is so special. And when I went into this thrift store, I thought, you know what? I'm, I bet you anything that they have cloisonne, cloisonne jewelry. And sure enough, this was the first piece I found. So as you can see, it is the roses with the inlaid gold. I initially questioned as to whether or not this actually was cloisonne, but it's I've just never seen it like this before. It's a very thin cloisonne, and all of the pieces I've ever collected are typically in the locket style. But either way, when I initially saw this rose necklace, I said, oh, baby, yeah. And that's when I went full, I mean, on the floor, digging through the bins to try to see if they had anything else. And lo and behold, I wore this in my last video. I found the mother of all cloisonne pieces that I'm obsessed with, and it is this vase. I mean, how unique, how funky. I love the chain that it comes with. I mean, it is, in my opinion, this is to die for. This is just what makes jewelry so unique. They do not make jewelry like this anymore, and I love the bright colors. I love the inlaid different colors, the coral, the butterfly. It is just so whimsical. And I swear, every time I put this on, I just feel like a funky lady from the 1960s or whenever this was made, maybe the 70s. But it is truly just such special jewelry, in my opinion. If you collect cloisonne, croissonne, let me know. But I know you can find it on Etsy. I've filled my cart before with all these different pieces of cloisonne from Etsy, but I never purchased it because half the fun for me is actually finding it in a vintage store, a thrift store, a flea market. Ugh, it's just, it's again, it's the thrill to hunt when it comes to thrift store shopping. I also found this really funky pastel necklace that I had to have. I think that the colors are so beautiful. I can see this just with so many different things. I'll probably do my hair in a low ponytail with maybe a high necked top or something of that nature, but just, it just gives me retro vibes and they almost feel like metal coated beading so the beads are just coated in some kind of paint or enamel i don't know but i thought it was so cute and so funky 
editing this in really quickly. I for, almost forgot to share with you, I found a vintage Christian Dior bathrobe that I was super excited about. Just so cute. I saw it hanging there and I said, wait a second. I was initially drawn. I said, what is this fabric? You know, I love a good terry cloth. And uh, lo and behold, pulled it out. I said, that's a that's a little retro vintage Christian Dior robe. And so of course I snagged this thing up and washed it on hot, uh, dried it, washed it on gentle too. And it's already getting quite a bit of use. I really have found that I love collecting vintage robes. I have one, it must be from the 80s or the 90s, a silk from Victoria's Secret. <laughs> and it is just so decadent. And so you never know what you're gonna find at the thrift store, but I thought this would just be a really quick, fun thing to show you. It's in great condition too. So it was a little teeny haul, but it was still a little thrift haul. And I'm so excited about these different pieces. I'm finally at the point, this is kind of a side note tangent, I'm finally at the point where I have been going through my closet and I'm actually reworking a lot of early pieces I had sewn up because they had some interesting uh, methodology in terms of that I use to sew them up. This was a, a piece I had sewn up so long ago and the neck, I've never worn it. It's very cute, but I never wore it because the neck facing, and I'll show that to you at some point and show you what I end up making with this. The facing was so bad. <laughs> I'll be the first one to call myself out. It, I, you know, I had just started sewing. And so I think I'm gonna try to make something that I'll actually wear. You know, I'm not much one to wear kind of a flimsy t-shirt dress, although I love the fabric. So I may try to make this into a silhouette that I really would wear. But again, I love all the colors. I mean, it's it's almost has that, that vintage look and that Versace type feel, but <laughs> it cracks me up. So we'll see but I'll keep you posted on what I kind of remake with this and maybe even add that to a future video. And then the second piece I'm just working on right now, and I'm mainly sharing this with you to let you know, we don't start out as professionals, let's put it that way. And I love that for myself two years ago, I had such blind confidence. But then now that I have two years of sewing under my belt, still very new into the game, let's be honest, but I can already see, you know, things I can tweak and make better. It's funny because, okay, this was, and I'll put the pattern up there. This was a top. I did wear it out to dinner. You better believe I wore this out to dinner with my husband. <laughs> uh, he's so supportive. He loves it when I wear the stuff I sew, but this, this just, the whole thing. I am basically taking it all apart. I didn't know really at that point, again, so new into the game back then, really how to do good rolled hems. I certainly didn't know how to do a French seam, which y'all know that's my main method of operating over here until I get a serger. But this one never fit me very well. It, it blouses out a little too much. The armholes were way over to the sides, yet the sleeves were pinned in. So then I've got the fabric flapping. I just didn't know what, what I was really, really doing. So I'm going to rework this and try to, to make it so that it's something I'll actually want to wear and kind of go from there. But we'll see. I've got all these projects kind of going on in my mind right now but I also have fall pieces that I'm wanting to sew. So I'm just trying to figure out which ones I really want to start on first. Like I said, I'll hold on to some of these, but have you upcycled anything recently? Have you found any really special pieces yourself? It can be so much fun to go out and just get out of the house, go look at stuff, things of that nature. I'll look forward to being back here in the next week or so. I definitely want to show you the green and white collection, the Aga collection, as I'm calling it, accidental green and white. And 
will be back in the near future. But I hope that you've been doing great. Happy, happy creating and sewing and be well.